Hey everyone, this is Mike from Mike's Do Yourself. Today I want to show you how to put in a pro profile spot rack from PRX. And I'll show you all the equipment that we're going to use and all the tools we're going to use here. Now these are all going to be the tools that we're using. I got, uh, I don't have a 15 16 socket readily available, but 24 millimeter should be close. Uh, 15 16 wrench, open wrench. Uh, I've got half inch and a half inch socket. Uh, pencil, measuring tape, level. I've got a drill, some drill bits, and a stud finder. So that's about everything. And if you have a plumb line, uh, they ask for a plumb line also. So we have the instructions. There's a reinforcement kit that you can buy, and that's if you want to do dips or other attachments just to make the bars a little sturdier. So that would go on the top of the rack, and I think it's with these bars here. And then this bar will be oh part of the attachment rack on the reinforcement kit so yeah this bar will go with the reinforcement kit and then you have your main bars and we really wanted this color so we got the light blue or the sky blue color and then we've got the top and the bottom mounting brackets here and then these J hooks are going to go into the squat rack once the squat rack is up when I got everything delivered I was missing the main hardware kit for the squat rack and this is the bag right here I had to wait a couple extra days I emailed uh, PRX performance and they sent me out a new bag. I guess uh, one of the bags got damaged in transit and the hardware fell out and didn't make it to me. So this is the bag that I was waiting on and I've already got from the floor, I've got it marked 19 inches from the top of the mat here. So I've got one, two, three, four, four marks and those are all at 19 inches and so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start at one end and drill the hole and put the lag screw in there and then they want you to do the very they want you to start on the right and then do the left and then use a level and make sure your bar is straight so I went ahead and uh, check the studs and the, on this wall it's 24 inches or it's 16 inches between each stud so from here to here 16 inches from here to here 16 inches and from here to there 16 inches and you just want to pick somewhere on your wall where you can go at least I think it's uh, 91 inches and I've got about 93 inches clearance until I hit the top of my uh, rail for my garage door. So I'm going to measure again exactly 19 inches. And then I'm just going to make sure it's right in the center. Ears pointing down so you can read the PRX like that. If you have 24 inch studs or your spacing is 24 inches, hey, what's up, girl? You coming to help me out? Huh? So it would be here, 
the middle and then on the end if it's 24 inches on center. Or if you have 24 inch spacing for your studs. So we'll use a lag screw and a washer. Use the stud finder and go in the center of the stud. And then for the next measurement, we're going to be measuring up to 70 inches and then making the same four marks on each stud. Or you can go from the center of the hole that you did for the bottom bracket and measure 51 inches up from each one of those holes. But I'm going to go just 70 inches from the ground and then make a hole or make a mark on every stud. So now that I found the center of the stud, I'm going to go ahead and mark 70 inches again, just to double check that all those measurements are correct. 70, 70. make sure that it levels out with your level. So before you tighten everything up, just make sure that your ears line up on both sides so that you got a vertical line there going up and down and that it's straight. That way, if it's not, you can move this left or right, you can move the bottom one left or right, just to make sure that they're all lined up the way they should be. So this is where your plumb bob would come in handy, just hang it from here and then just make sure that it lines up with this ear right here of the other bracket. So if you're using the reinforcement kit, it comes with this bar also. And what it does is to support the uh, top sections of the squat rack. So this is gonna fit right in here. So you wanna take these two lag screws out and then just put it right where those lag screws go and then put the lag screws through there. This one doesn't have ears down or up, so it can go either way, this way or that way. And I am leaving all these bars a little bit loose, just in case I have to shift them uh, left or right while I'm doing the assembly of the squat rack. So it's up to you whether you want to tighten them but like I said, you may have to shift them left or right if you don't have a plumb box to make sure they're exactly uh, lined up. I'm going to install the reinforcement kit first. So it's going to go 
like this on the left side and you're going to put a uh, bolt, the plastic spacer, the other plastic spacer, and then you're going to have a washer, and then you're going to have the nut on the end. You have the nut on the end of it. So that's how that'll go. Okay, I'll show you how it's going to go. We'll have the bolt, the washer, the bracket, the spacer, and then we'll have the flat washer on the outside. And then you have the nut on the outside, on the inside of this bracket. So you can go ahead and tighten this up most of the way. You'll want to tighten it to where it can move a little bit. The other side is the same way. You got your bolt that goes through, your flat washer, the piece that goes hangs down. Then you got the plastic spacer in the middle. And you've got the bracket and you got the flat washer and the nut. And the next step after that would be to attach the linkage arms to the mounting bracket. And you got your short bolt here, you've got a flat washer, you've got your plastic spacer, and then you're gonna have this facing inward, and your gas strut or your shock be on the outside. So we'll just put this right there. And once you got the linkage arms hooked up. And you got all four of them put on. Then you can attach the uprights. And for the linkage arms, it's the same bolt, washer, spacer, washer, and then lock nut on the end there. So it's gonna be the long bolt. Coming in from the outside. You're gonna have the washer. And then the spacers are going to be facing outward, like this, so be like this, this, and this, and then you're upright. Stay in just for a second. Reinforcement kit here. I'll go in like that. You have your other washer, and you have your lock, lock nut. And you're just going to repeat the process for the other side and for the bottom bracket also. So for the top, it's going to be at the very top hole where it says 20 there. And again, it's bolt, washer. Spacer in between there, spacer in between, washer, and lock nut. And you just tighten that up. And just make sure you don't over tighten it. The bottom linkage arm will be attached to the one, two, three, third hole, depending on how high up your mounting bracket is. But if it's at the 19 inch spot, then it'll be 19 inches from the bottom. So again, the linkage arm to the upright, you have the bolt, the washer, the linkage arm, the plastic washer that goes in that way. And then on the other side, you have the flat washer and then the lock nut. So after you get all four of those done, you can go ahead and tighten everything down but don't over tighten it because you, you're going to need everything to pivot up and down. And then after that, we'll hook these up. So when you push this against the wall, then you can put your shock on. I'm going to add a washer 
on the outside of this. And you just put it onto the ear or into the ear there. And then you use your lock nut that they supplied you. you just tighten that on the other side. And you just hold this, tighten that down, and then tighten this one down. And the same for the bottom bracket. You want to hold that so it doesn't fall on you. And I guess you want to remove that washer just so there's more thread on the nut there. So yeah, the washer's not necessary. So there it is, fully assembled, and it is fairly easy to take out. So if any of these are stiff, you may want to just loosen them up a little bit. Kit. So this should go here. So I'm gonna have to change this bolt out. That bolt I got right. And I'll have to loosen up that bottom one. This should pull in and out real easily. And if I didn't mention it before, I was using a 732nd drill bit for these lag screws. That's the finished product. If they're a little tight coming out, then you want to loosen up this bolt and this bolt and this bolt. And I've got to tighten up this bolt. And you may want to loosen up this bolt too. So any a combination of those, and it'll help this come out a little bit easier and store a little bit easier too. Now it's time to try it out. Oh, that's it. I hope this has been helpful. This has been Mike from Mike's Do Yourself. Good luck on your next Trumbo Automotive project. Uh, feel free to comment, subscribe, like, share, and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.